little piggy went to market. This little First piggy rule of leadership is to show up. You don't call a general election. <laughs> you don't call a general election and say it's the most important election in her lifetime, and then not even be bothered to come and debate the issues at stake. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed at home. This little piggy had roast beef. This little piggy had not. And this little piggy went wee 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 all the way home. Don't worry, I'm not actually urinating on number 10. But metaphorically, our party have been for years. This is a party election broadcast that I can't be asked to watch. You won't see us in the streets, you won't hear us on the radio, but we are Britain's biggest political party. The silent majority, the unheard third. We don't vote with our heads or with our hearts. We don't change our minds or float. And we don't go on and on about our opinions online because we don't vote. We're the CBA and we can't be asked. This was the plan, but we couldn't be asked. So here we are on the battle bus. We've just left HQ and now we're going to see if we can talk to some of our supporters. I'm not voting. You're by not the voting? Way. Yes! You see? But it's not because I can't be asked. Why can't you be asked? Why? It's because I don't know enough. No, you How should vote. Why? I don't know. Are you interested in voting? Not at all. Excellent. No, I don't know any of the things. But you I don't can't. Know why. So do you want to join the party? Party. Can't be asked party. No, not really. Not joining any parties. You can't be asked? No, no. I, will. I don't think so. Hi there. Yeah, just wondering how you will be voting in the coming general election. Now you got time, you cockwomble. Another one for the team. Hello, sir. How will you be voting in the coming Another vote for the party. Mind you, not everyone agrees with our policies. Yesterday, I spoke to someone who apparently knows exactly what he's talking about. Is there an argument that if we just ignore all the problems in Britain, they might just go away? Do you know, historically, that hasn't been the case. The CBA is represented all over Britain and we're getting bigger and bigger. In Manchester in 2015, 56% of registered voters didn't vote. And most of them were young people, where they're sleeping in and endless podcasts. We're very proud of them. They're shaping this country's future without even lifting a finger. No, those are used to upload pictures of their food. Our manifesto is simple. Education, can't be asked. Immigration, can't be asked. Tax evasion, now this we do have a problem with. <laughs> I'm only joking. We can't be asked to deal with anything. I haven't even written anything down. Troubled about Trident? Try, don't. Bothered about borders? No, it's boring. It only takes a couple of minutes to vote. But here's a list of things you could do instead. Pick up a dog so it can see things from your point of view. Read a pamphlet or simply make some disappointing love. So join the CBA party today. It's easy. You don't have to do anything. The CBA party. Ignore Britain's problems and they might just go away. Come on, be asked. Vote on the 8th of June. Good leaders don't run away from a debate, and Theresa May undoubtedly should be here. Un without a shout, whatever we've discussed this evening, her absence is undoubtedly the shadow that hangs over this election. How dare you call a general election, then run away from the debate? Uh, I, I, so putting the country before you put your party, and I think we all now know that this was a totally unnecessary election and the only reason Theresa May called it was that she thought she was going to have a massive majority as a result of it. Whatever happened to strength and stability? Where, where's strength and stability gone? Weak and wobbly is where we are, not so much the Iron Lady as the U-turn Queen. That is not the leadership that we require. I, 
I believe leaders should walk the walk and should be pre prepared to defend their politics and their policies. They should also be prepared to stick to their guns and it's shocking that Theresa May has U-turned on so many things. There wasn't going to be an election, now there's an election. There wasn't going to be a, a tax on uh, the self-employed, or there was going to be a tax on the self-employed, and then it was abolished. And then there's this latest U-turn on the dementia tax. So I'm not one for U-turns. UKIP will always be the outsider in British politics. It'll be the one that the Westminster elites and the establishment media want to mock and ridicule. But we have been proven right, proven right on Brexit, Prove right on immigration, prove right on grammar schools, prove right on protecting our police and security services. Tonight, this country stands at a crossroads and the choice is stark. You can stand up for what really matters, values of openness, tolerance and compassion. Or you can turn inward to isolation, division and hate. Tonight, we've seen the real choice facing our country between a Labour government and a Conservative government. This election will decide whether young people are saddled with debt or freed from it, whether we invest in our National Health Service, schools and social care, or they continue to be cut, whether older people get the dignity they deserve or see their incomes fall. On June the 8th, you have the power to decide. Vote Labour for the many, not the few. Angus Robertson. In this debate, you've heard different views about the kind of country we should be. For those watching in England, Wales and Northern Ireland, the SNP will always work with others who share our belief in fairness on of an outward-looking, welcoming society. Now more than ever, we need a strong opposition to hold the Tories to account. The SNP will be that strong voice. And we'll be continuing the manifesto on which the Conservative government was elected in 2015. Uh, so I don't think there's a, a need for an election. I think the next election will be in 2020. Let me make this very clear because, again, it's a Frank law. The next election will be no buts, no snappy elections, no change in the law. It's not going to see an election before I'm, 2020. I'm, I'm not going to be calling a snap election. going to be calling a snap election. going to be calling a snap election. Where we agreed that the government should call a general election to be held on the 8th of June. I want to explain the reasons for calling a snap election. First rule of leadership is to show up. You don't call a general election. You don't call a general election and say it's the most important election in her lifetime and then not even be bothered to come and debate the issues at stake. This little piggy went to market, this little piggy stayed at home, this little piggy had roast beef, this little piggy had none, and this little piggy went wee 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 all the way.